Welcome back to the Freedom Equation. So today, you guys, I want to talk about flipping. So um, I am not an expert flipper by any means. I have partnered with one person. I have flipped one condo. Um, I used my money for the down payment. I was in there doing work with the contractors, you know, making sure everything got done correctly. Um, so I, I have a little bit of experience flipping. Um, my four unit buildings, I have already, I, you know, I purchased and I've renovated but not so much to sell at a profit, just to hold on to and increase the, the value of the property and, of course, the ability uh, to get higher rents. But I am now on the hunt to find the perfect fix and flip. So I kind of wanted to go over with you guys just kind of what I'm looking for and to share what I think, you know, a newbie, kind of like me when it comes to flipping, like a newbie should be looking for. Um, and, and I'll tell you what you shouldn't be looking for as a newbie, uh, trying to get into the fix and flipping game. So things that you should avoid and things that I'm trying to avoid are major, major fixers. And I know this sounds pretty, you know, obvious, right? Like, you know, um, you know, if a place needs a roof and needs a furnace, needs a hot water heater, needs um, to be completely gutted, you know, and, and what people mean by gutted is ripping all the drywall off the studs, taking it down to the studs because of like cat pee or drug use or, you know, structural issues, right? Like if you got 10, 10 major cracks running through the foundation, um, anything that's, that, that's like 10, 20, 50, like a sewer line that's collapsed, any major systems, um, like individually, like other than the foundation, the foundation could easily be 50 or a hundred thousand dollars, but like, okay, a sewer line, you know, you could probably pay somebody 10 to $25,000 to fix that. And if that was the only problem, you could probably be okay with that. Or if you just needed a $5,000 furnace, or if you needed a $2,000 hot water heater, um, you know, if you needed a $15,000 roof, you know, uh, if you need just one of those things, you know, maybe, maybe you can do that, right? Like me personally, I don't know how to do a roof. I don't know how to fix a sewer line. I'm not trenching it up and, 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 and putting down new, uh, new three inch, uh, piping or whatever and connecting it to the street. I'm not doing any of that. Um, I'm not pulling out, uh, an oil furnace, right? With an oil tank. I'm not back there with a backhoe trying to figure out where that is and to pull it out and decommission it, not doing any of that stuff, right? That's a lot of work, a lot of money. And here's the thing. When fixing those things, you would think, one would think a brand new roof, a brand new sewer line, brand new electrical panel, brand new water meter, brand new drywall, you would think that that would provide value, right? Like a homeowner would be like, oh, wow, it's got a new roof. It's got a new sewer line. It's got a new electrical panel. It's got a brand new furnace, right? Yes, yes, they are really excited that those things are brand new and fixed that have warranties or whatever because you had a professional contractor do it. But they expect to buy a house with those already working anyways. So it's not tr like, like, okay, hear me out, you guys. Yes, those things are important. Do they add value? Yes. But not as much value as you would think. Because when you buy a house as a homeowner, right? Because as a flipper or, a, or, or an aspiring flipper, the homeowner is the person you're selling the property to, right? They are called the end buyer. So you need to create a product that they are going to want to buy from you. Yes, all of those things are really cool. Brand new water heater, water meter, electrical panel, roof, windows, siding, sewer line, foundation. Yes, all that stuff is great. However, a, a mom, and, mom and dad home buyer expect those things to already be okay, right? Like none of these people are looking to buy a home that needs a bunch of work, right? That's what you are doing. So you are tasked with fixing it up to sell it to, to a, a mom and dad home buyer. Um, 
so they just expect those things, right? Like nobody's like happy. Oh, I got a house without a leaky roof. Well, no, it's it's because people don't buy houses with leaky roofs, right? You know, they they make the the seller fix those things. So yes, it adds value, but be very careful about saying how much value that stuff adds. What really adds value, what really adds value is adding livable square footage, but with an asterisk here, you guys, doing that by adding livable square footage, check your jurisdiction, your jurisdiction that's probably we're going to require permits. And from my experience talking to other investors who have flipped multiple properties and new build construction, I did a little thing with developer, uh, a developer um, that I've met, Jordan. Permits can kill a deal. Be very, very careful about that. When you get into permitting, when you're adding livable square footage, adding a bedroom, adding a bathroom, adding, um, you know, whatever, converting a garage, if you have to pull, moving structure, like if you're doing structural work, like moving load bearing walls and stuff, you are now at the whim of the city. You are at the whim of how long they want to take, what they want to do, when they want to do it, if they want to approve it. Let's say you do it and they come inspect it and they don't like the way that it was done and you have to redo it. That will kill your deal. I've heard it again and again when people are fighting through the permit process. It could take months. It could take years, depending on what you're doing in the city and, and whatever, right? We're here in Portland, Oregon, and the permitting processing is not favorable. It really is not. And I've heard it's even worse in California. So, and I'm like New York, right? I'm sure it's very, very difficult. So be very careful. You, unless you're adding massive value, please just be very careful, please, about that process because you're now taking out of your hands and putting it into the city's hands and that is not good for your investment. What I would recommend that adds value is paint. Paint is very cheap. And it's easy to do, right? So look into just painting the inside, the outside, right? It, it adds value. It freshens things up. Uh, new floors, new light fixtures, um, things that people can see, things that people use, right? Like refreshing the kitchen, refreshing the master bathroom, right? And things that people spend a lot of time on, right? They're standing on the floors all the time. They turn on light light fixtures all the time. Every time they step into a room, they see the paint job. When they're in the kitchen, which, you know, at least three times a day, people are in there for meals, right? Um, you know, having stainless steel appliances, having a good countertop, having good um, cabinets, good flooring, good paint, um, you know, convenient uh, plugins for all of their different appliances. Um, those things are important and they add value. So it's not that the, 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 the structure of the house, the, 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 the significant mechanical aspects of, of the house, all of those are expected to work. But really where I think you add the most value, and again, I'm not a professional flipper. I, the one flip I did, I made $20,000. It was amazing. Um, is you really just got to do things in that, that people can see, right? It's people that like, they touch, feel, and see. Those are the things that are most important. I think those are the things that add the most value. Um, and that's what I've been doing when I buy a, you know, a multifamily property. I don't go looking for a property that needs foundation work. I don't look for a property that needs new siding. I don't look for a property that needs new windows or roof. I look for something that's already put together and just needs the rent increased and needs um, a refresher, right? Fresh paint, fresh flooring, that type of thing. Light fixtures, it's easy stuff, cabinets. Um, you know, new appliances. So that's going to be my strategy. As I am actively looking for flips, I've chatted with many other investors, some who have some experience flipping, some who don't, some people who are willing to do the work, some people who don't have time, but have money, right? And just trying to find a deal that makes sense and then find the right partner, right? Like if it's a deal that requires a lot of capital, I know that there are certain people that I can turn to who have money, but not so much time to do work. If I find something that needs a lot of work, but not so much capital, 
I'll know to reach out to a different partner, somebody who has a contracting background, somebody who is willing to do the work um, so we can do it cheap. So those are things that you need to think about when you're getting into your first flip like I am. I'm actively looking for deals. As you guys can see on the videos here, I'm walking properties. I'm, I'm working with wholesalers. I'm looking for my own stuff. I'm working with uh, real estate agents who have off-market properties. And I'm just looking at things to see if I can make the numbers work. And I'll talk more about that later, you guys. If you're interested in like doing rehab budgets and uh, comping a property, where is a good, when's a good uh, price to uh, where is a good price to buy? Are you comping it? Where is a good price to sell? You know, um, location. Um, you know, I, I could talk more about those things, but I just really wanted to give like the newbie flippers. Like this is what I'm doing. I'm looking for things that are cosmetic fluff and buff fixers, paint, carpet, floors, light fixtures, a uh, little bit of work in the bathrooms, a little bit of work in the kitchens, nothing major. I don't want to pull out an entire kitchen. I don't want to have to pull out an entire bathroom, right? Because that involves, you know, getting plumbers and other contractors involved and, and, and spending a lot of money. So um, that's what I'm actively looking for. I've reached out to my network on Facebook and, and other social media platforms. I've been talking with people. Now I have multiple people that are working with me to find a deal so we can jump on it. You know, I have some cash. I have some credit. I, I am willing to do some work. And if you have a little bit of all of those things, you are a really great partner. So if you guys are looking to partner something, somebody, if you're looking to a, a, do a joint venture with somebody, if you need help networking, Feel free to reach out to me in the comments. Um, I, I, you know, obviously, if you're in another state, I probably can't help you, but I'll tell you what I'm doing to find a partner, whether it be money, whether it be, you know, somebody who's handy who can do some work, whatever it is, I'll tell you how I found my partners and then how we're actively looking for deals. Other than that, you guys, thank you so much. See you on the next one.